Assalamualaikum, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Azah and I am the moderator for this session. We are in um, edX first flip learning brown bag session. So the university is going through um, um, trainings and exposure and awareness and, and learning among us lecturers on how to do flip learning with our students. So we have our first batch of um, trial experts with us today who will be sharing uh, for this brown bag session. We will try to make it um, concise and um, comprehensive enough for this whole one hour. So this is a one hour session. You can have, it's, a, it's called a brown bag session because you could have lunch with us right now. You can bring your lunch uh, while watching and um, we will uh, listen from three panels from our PASUM, uh, Pusat Asasi University Malaya. Yeah? Um, the first one is uh, Dr. Mahanum Jalil. It's our, our first panel. Dr. Mahanum Jalil is a senior lecturer at the Biology Division, Center for Foundation Studies in Sciences. She's been teaching pre-university biology students uh, subjects such as anthro autotropic and heterotropic nutrition, animal classification and diversity, cell respiration, cell cycle and cell division since 2005. Dr. Mahanong completed all her degree from University of Malaya and her expert of, uh, area of expertise is in plant biotechnology. So um, Dr. Mahanong, there she is. Hopefully on the screen soon. Our second panel, we have Mr. Amirul Muhammad Khairi Manan. Mr. Amirul is an education officer at the Mathematics Division, Center for Foundation Studies in Sciences. He has been teaching three university mathematics subjects such as algebra, calculus, vector, statistics and programming since October 2012. Prior to that, he has completed his degree in electrical engineering at University of Malaya in 2005. Five years working in various industries, including uh, design, PCB layouts, and web engineer, and completed his master in computer science at University of Malaya in 2013. In 2017, uh, Mr. Amirul completed his postgraduate diploma in education at University of Malaya. Currently, he's pursuing his doctorate degree at the Faculty of Education, University of Malaya. So, bakal doctor, yeah? His research areas include mathematics and education, online learning, hybrid learning, and STEM education. We have our third panel, Dr. Muhammad Fahmi Azman. So, Dr. Fahmi received his PhD degree in the field of optical devices, optical fiber fabrication, and photonic crystal fiber from University of Malaya, Malaysia. He is now a senior lecturer in physics division PASUM and his research interest focuses on fiber fabrication involving metal dielectric interface, surface plasma resonance, photonic crystal fiber and optical devices. So a true physicist is there, yeah? Dr. Fami. Just want to remind uh, all our audience, you can kindly scan the barcode that is shared on the screen for your attendance. And at the end of the session or throughout the session before you leave, you can scan the feedback form, the feedback uh, QR code as displayed for you to provide us your opinion and your um, advice for improvement for us in ADAT. So without further ado, I would like to invite our speakers. Our speakers on the screen to roughly um, share with the audience your experience of practicing flip learning in one or two minutes. Maybe we can start with Dr. Mahanu. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Yeah. To everyone, can you hear me and see me? Can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. So thank you very much, Dr. Azar, for the kind introduction. All right. Eh? Uh, um, firstly, I would like to thank ADAC eh, for inviting me uh, to this uh, sharing session eh, on the flip classroom. Eh? So I'm not the expert here. Eh? Uh, I just uh, will 
share my experience in conducting uh, the deep learning. So, uh, what motivates me to do this uh, deep learning? Okay, uh, it's actually uh, we had uh, this training and my attack on uh, this deep learning uh, this year in July. Eh? Uh, about 2022, and I found it uh, very interesting. Eh? It's a new way of uh, teaching and learning. So uh, now, Pasung uh, is currently in the first semester. Uh, therefore, me and my colleagues eh, try to uh, introduce or to conduct and the uh, deep learning to our students. Eh? So uh, not only for the student, me myself, eh, uh, it is also a new thing eh, for me. And plus, um, I do not fully implement uh, this deep learning uh, in my uh, lecture. What I did was I start uh, with a, a simple deep learning, which uh, I shall uh, share eh, afterwards. Eh? It's kind of teaser. Huh? Okay, and in my opinion, uh, this uh, deep learning is just another way of teaching and learning method, uh, whereby uh, we could encourage our students to be more resourceful, to be more independent in learning, and to get them ready eh, for the next topic or discussion eh, in the lecture. Okay, Dr. Azhar? Thank you, Dr. Mahano. Thank you so much for that in, uh, kind introduction. Um, let's go to uh, Mr. Amirul. What actually inspired you to do flip learning? All right, okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Azhar, and to whole uh, edX team. Okay, uh, so again, I think the same thing, uh, just uh, the same as Dr. Mahadum. Okay, I think uh, for us, Pasum, this is our first time. But I think uh, we have to say thank, a big thank to ADEC, uh, I mean, for introducing uh, to us this flip classroom. I think because without ADEC, uh, uh, to push us to do this style of methods, I think we all will keep on stuck with our own uh, traditional uh, ways of teaching. Yeah? Because, I mean, of course, you need someone to push you to the next level. And I think ASDAC has done a superb job on this. Lah. So I think uh, the good thing about um, Fleet Classroom is uh, we give the, our students a head start. You know, because uh, previously the students uh, the normal way, the traditional way is students coming to the lecture, you know, without knowing any, uh, have no, having the knowledge on the on that subject. And they expect the lecturer to uh, pass on new knowledge to them, you know. So, so what happened is inside, uh, during that uh, session, the lecture, students uh, need to digest. And most of the time, uh, they are wondering uh, what is to be uh, understand? What is what is right? What is wrong? And they have the fear to ask questions, right? So, what if uh, that experience we bring uh, uh, forward before they, they come to the class? That's what the whole idea of flip classroom. I think which is uh, very good. So at least uh, the student have some idea uh, on the topic before they attend the uh, actual class. So inside the class, uh, the teacher can uh, give uh, the explanation again and. And the students can uh, have the opportunity to ask questions. But having said that, I think that's that's the ideally that's what we are trying to uh, to do lah. But <laughs> you know, it's ideally. But practically, uh, this is something that we are going to share lah after this, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Amuro. It's really important to be able to distinguish which one is the ideal one and which yeah. one is the practical and. <laughs> The, the the real world uh, practice that you can we can uh, um, share about. I look forward to listening more from you in the next round. Um, I'll invite uh, Dr. Fami to share the inspiration of you starting flip learning. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Azza. Um So essentially, what inspired me is because uh, in past uh, we actually share students. So meaning that the lecturers uh, share students. But the only difference is uh, we are provided a specific lectures hour to finish the topic given. So for my case, uh, I've been assigned like for nine hours lectures uh, to four main stream. I had one, uh, I had two, physical one and physical two. So uh, so if you like calculate uh, how many hours per week for my lecture, I think it's around 24 hours per week. So uh, sometimes for one hour, I need to cover like two or three learning outcomes. So I could not finish the topic on time. 
Therefore, I need to bring the topic that which I, uh, I haven't covered yet in the lecture to the next one. So I have to make videos, recorded uh, videos and so on. So when we uh, went for a workshop that organized by Flip, uh, by, by ADAPT, uh, related to Flip Classroom, then I found it, in, I found it is, did it, uh, that is interesting. And somehow I think it could uh, solve my issue, lah, the, the insufficient time to finish the topics. So uh, I'll, I tried, uh, because like uh, Dr. Manam said just now, we are just new with classroom. So uh, I uh, successfully did three hours of lit class and it really helps. I think that's what inspired me lah, in terms of time management as a lecturer. Thank you, Dr. Fami. So, Yes, we look forward to listening more from each and every one of you, your experience of first time doing this. I understand that uh, one, some of our audience may have already practiced some version of flip learning, flip classroom in their own time before this. But um, we would like to let this be a platform for us to share at the end of the session. If any of the other any of the other audience who would like to share um, some, some experience or some tips at the end of it. So we understand that uh, flip learning involves the pre-class part, the during class part and the reflection part. So we have kind of um, arranged our panel to um, share with us the pre part which is going to be shared by Dr. Mahanom. Mahanom, would you like to um, share with us the technology and the preparation that you have put in, in terms of flip learning? Dr. Mahanom, you are still on mute. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. All right, and, um, the technology that I use eh, in my uh, flip classroom, eh, so I believe eh, there are many eh, or lots of technology that can be used eh, uh, for flip learning. But for me, I use the one that I'm familiar with. Eh? Uh, okay. the, the platform that I use uh, is uh, Spectrum, of course, the main one is Spectrum. And there is no actually high-end technology eh, that I use in my uh, flip classroom. Eh? Uh, I use several methods here. Uh, one of it is a forum, eh? uh, also in spectrum. Okay, um, I ask the student eh, to give feedback eh? uh, in the spectrum eh? based on the material that I give, uh, the reading materials, eh, for example. And then I also use a, a padlet. Eh? I share my padlets and ask them to uh, give their feedback as well. Eh? And another one that I use is H5P, also in the spectrum. Eh? Uh, it is in a kind of video form. Eh? After giving them the uh, uh, reading materials eh, or video, uh, I will post a video with an embedded uh, question in it. Eh? So uh, I will ask the student eh, to uh, kind of uh, answer the question eh, in H5P eh, for their self reflection eh, or their self evaluation. Eh. So that are the three things eh, that I use eh, in uh, my flip classroom. Okay. Dr. Mano, would you like to share something? No. No, yeah? Shall we? Okay. So that's some insight on the technology and the preparation of the content. Shall we move to Mr. Amirul? Yeah? Right, okay. Thank you, Dr. Taza. Okay. Uh, right, okay. So I'll continue with the uh, inside the classroom activities. Okay, so Dr. Manum, I think uh, sh she did her own way. So I'm sure I have my own way. Dr. Pami has his own way and the rest of us has our own way. 
right? But the but the idea is there lah, right? The same thing, right? To do a flip classroom. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Is it okay? You all can see uh, my screen, right? Um, not yet. It's on the way, it seems. So, Mr. Amir is going to share about uh, the, how, do, how did you design student-centered class activities during the flip classroom in class right. session. Right, so right, right. Coming. It's still It's still coming. The slides still not appearing. Uh, uh, not yeah, you can see from here. Oh, can see. Already, you can see already. Yes. Eh? yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Then so, I'll uh, just continue. Is it okay, Dotaza? Please proceed. I I can't see it yet. Okay. Right. Uh, I can't you. see okay. it yet, but uh, organizer dah nampak ya. Okay, right. I just give an overview first uh, mm -hmm. on the on the materials on the preparation that I did. And then I will zoom into the class activities. All right. So uh, because first, be, of course, before uh, I go further into the class activities on how I engage the students, I think it's best that I explain on what are the preparation they have done, lah, okay, uh, for the students, right? So uh, what I did, actually, I, I only I only conducted the flip classroom only twice only. So, so there's nothing much to be shared actually. Okay, there's not much experience here. So, uh, what I did, uh, so I use uh, MS Teams. Okay, I don't use a Spectrum. So I created a video. I posted using Add Puzzle. Okay, and then uh, in the inside the Add Puzzle, we can monitor, we can track the students' participation. And another thing is uh, we can embed questions. That's why I choose to use Add Puzzle. And 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 then the second thing is I created another version of the of my lecture of my notes in PDF because uh, I consider that some of the students may have some uh, low data connection and so on. So that's why I created a PDF lah. So the in class, uh, these are the activities. Okay, I'll, I'll discuss further on this. And this is the post class, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so. Basically, this is what happening inside the class. Lah. So I think I, I threw in everything. Lah. Basically, this is the plan that I've designed for two hour lectures. Okay, uh, some of it are more like a routine. So, eh? We start the class for me up and some things. Uh, but I just focus on on these three in red colored. Okay, so uh, at the beginning of the class. Okay, so uh, what I did, I checked on the MS Teams on the contents uh, whether the students has have viewed the videos or not. Okay, so using Add Puzzle, we can monitor whether the student has watched or not. Right, so it's a bit like a suspense for the student lah. They know that I'm watching them. You know, uh, because if not, eh, they will take. They won't even bother to uh, even open the video and so on. Right. So here's what uh, the Add Puzzle looks like. Okay. So from here we can see lah. Uh, uh, we can see how many student has uh, watched the student uh, the the video. Eh? Okay. And then we can see whether the student has answered the question. Eh? So these are the good ones lah. The hundred everything. Okay. But wait until you see the <laughs> slowly, slowly but surely and up zero per 100. So this is the reality, lah. reality check they have to uh, think about. Lah. How do we get uh, uh, part more participation from the students, right? So uh, from my experience on this, I have uh, about 400 students, only 200 who uh, sign in to watch this video. Uh, and in the end, only about 100 plus that actually watch the whole videos and answering the questions. Right. Okay. So there's something for me to improve, lah. Eh? Okay. So maybe my video is not entertaining enough, not in, not interesting enough. We are <laughs> okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. That, that's about uh, at puzzle, lah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have a PDF here. So again, PDF uh, is for. Uh, for the for the students to uh, view lah, have a quick view, and especially for those who have a low uh, data bandwidth, all right? Okay, and then uh, inside the lecture, inside, and then I cont after uh, reviewing on the contents of uh, what I have posted earlier, I continue with uh, some revision. Okay, review back what are the 
important things. So I give them about 20 minutes lecture because uh, I noticed that I, I am pretty sure I have in advance. I know that this, some of the students, they are still new on this concept. So uh, I believe that I need to uh, review back on the important things uh, of the lecture. Eh? So I dedicate, I dedicate, I dedicate about just about 20 minutes. You don't need the whole two hours to explain again because it will defeat the purpose. Okay. And then I choose uh, uh, straight away jump in uh, more into the exercises because we want to uh, get uh, the students to understand more by doing more activities inside the lecture, right? That's the whole uh, idea of this uh, flip classroom. Uh, eh? So students, they have some idea on the topics and then we uh, emphasize their understandings by doing more exercises. So for the exercises, I use a Padlet. So the good thing about Padlet is uh, students can share their answers. OK, so we, we want to get uh, participation from students, right? Just imagine uh, like Passum, uh, one lecture session, we have like a 200 plus students. OK, so it's very big. So how do we uh, engage with them right, actively? So uh, one of the things that I've tried is I'm using a Padlet lah over here. Eh? So by using a Padlet, so regardless whether they have a tablet a laptop or handphone, uh, which I believe all students has at least a minimum of handphone. Okay, so they can write in their answers. Okay, I give them, for example, a question here. Um, one question, sorry, where's the question? Uh, exercise over here. Okay, and then the students just write in uh, uh, on their tablet. Uh, for those who don't bring their tablet or laptop, they can just uh, scribble on their paper, a piece of paper, uh, take a picture and then upload on the Padlet, right? So from there, we can see a multiple uh, form of answers. So from here, students can see, hey, why why this fellow are doing it differently? Why this uh, this guy is doing a different approach methods or something, right? So by looking at different approach, students get to learn uh, to understand better. Lah. So they can know, oh, this is also acceptable, or oh, this is right, this is wrong, and so on. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that's about it. Lah. That's how I get uh, engagement with my student. Right, thank you, Dr. Azza. Thank you, Mr. Amirul. You're very, uh, you, you raised a very important um, thought that uh, the impression of the students about flip learning pretty much depends on their first experience with you doing it. Yeah, you're right, right. <laughs> so I would like to um, invite uh, Dr. Fami to tackle this. How do you really address the student's feedback and really make it um, make it natural and leave a good impression to the students? Thank you, Dr. Mirul. Take care, Dr. Fami. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alza. And also, Mr. Mirul uh, already shared everything, what uh, he, uh, he did for his flip with uh, his student. Uh, so since uh, we are the first time to use uh, this kind of method, flip, flip learning, then uh, our uh, the dep deputy uh, director of uh, academics has uh, run a survey and asked the feedback from the students. So I would like to share some of uh, this the survey, the survey, the results of the survey. Let me share the screen. <coughs> All right. So. The first, the, the classroom student feedbacks on the flip classroom. Uh, we uh, we already uh, get uh, around 500 responses, and uh, it shows that only 58 students, uh, and also 289 is just very satisfied and also satisfied with the flip learning flip classroom in classroom. And uh, the others is not satisfied and also not very satisfied. So I would like to share what uh, the student thoughts about uh, flip classroom. So let me share some of it. Uh, first one is uh, flip classroom boleh dikatakan effective and not suitable uh, to implement uh, with a large group of lecture. Okay, and then the second one, uh, he doesn't like the the, the, the the flip classroom because uh, you know the, the, the student is uh, just as SPM leavers, uh, just the leave school, so they cannot uh, what we call it cannot adapt to the new kind of uh, the, the, the teaching method. Okay, and then uh, also don't like, uh, it's not helping at all. And then uh, not suitable for mathematics. And also they need the guidance and the explanation uh, more concise in the lecture. 
and also uh, it is difficult to catch up what uh, are the what what is the the, the teaching method of this uh, what we call it the how 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 the lecturers conduct the flip classroom. So how I tackle this uh, for my class and how I deal with this. So the first one is we need to introduce what flip classroom is. So we can maybe organize a short workshop to the students to introduce them what flip classroom and then what is the benefit of flip classroom and how it works. So since classroom student is just just what we, uh, as I said just now just leave school, so they need to uh, get get used to uh, the new the, 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 the new teaching method and then uh, so it, it will give time for them to digest and then give us time also to implement this uh, with proper planning okay. and then uh, planning and coordination is also very important so since Pasum uh, share student so we need to coordinate between the division so we have like four or five division maths bio physics chemistry and English and maybe we can uh, we, we, we can plan that we don't have to keep the class in the same week at the same week so each division has uh, we will have a specific week uh, to flip so the student will eventually uh, provide the student to prepare and also have a sufficient time to watch at uh, to do the, the classroom and then the last one uh, i also need to improve uh, in terms of my videos uh, make, make it engaging and also make it clear and we need to explain also, explain also we, we just give them videos but in the lectures so we need to explain the videos content and make interesting videos and also we can rewatch them so student so have viewed your lesson and then we can prepare uh, to go more depth so the student will ask more so that that's how i uh, take care of how i deal with the student feedbacks so i think that's it Unto, uh, my my how how i take care of how, how i deal with the student Thank you, Dr. Fami. So that means um, we, we kind of require lots of try, um, trial and error. Um, no, that cycle of, of trying and keeping the students in the loop of what we're trying to do and make them understand and welcome their feedback. Yeah, um, yeah I'd like to invite uh, uh, the panels to share any tips or suggestions when you do your flip learning maybe for the one you want to do it for the first time who are considering but maybe you're afraid you know and audience if you'd like to start posting your questions on the chat section you are more than welcome to and as uh, organizers and panels can have a look at the questions on the chat section um who would like to start maybe uh mr amiru would you like to start on offering some tips and suggestions Right, okay, thank you, Dataza. I think uh, I think the first thing is uh, is to keep on learning lah, because this is something new for us. And then uh, we we ourselves uh, first we need to change lah. If you want to first we need to anticipate, we must be very positive on thing on this on this flip flip thing. You know, uh, we believe that uh, edX and UM are moving in the right direction, lah, because we have to we we have to because uh, the whole world is changing okay are uh, moving into this direction or not we will be left behind okay so we are pursuing our, our ranking everything whether we like it or not we have to uh, move forward like this and eh? and then people are already talking about micro credential and eh? uh, learning uh, creating videos and then students uh, attending class uh, by uh, completing their courses use it by videos and I, I i sincerely believe this is one of the stepping stones ah, okay uh, towards that uh, direction so so first thing i think maybe the first advice is is to keep on learning okay attend edX workshop definitely <laughs> although i only attended once only okay uh, edX has been providing if, if you look at our emails keep on coming workshop 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 <laughs> but we are all very busy people right <laughs> okay uh, so maybe 
we need to have some like I think last time that Adex did for Pasum like uh, one one session for all the academic stuff. I think that's that's the way to go lah. And if it's make it like an optional, then it's a bit difficult lah. And for for all of us, right? Uh, so my my uh, my experience is uh, for example on my first session of the my fleet classroom. Okay, like I said, only uh, I conducted only twice only. The first session before I used to the padlet. What I did, I I call upon the students to do uh, to demonstrate their answers using a document viewer, you know, and then I noticed that it took a long time, okay, and also on on one one session is only about five students only uh, able to share the answers. Yeah, I, I thought to myself, hey, is there any better way? We have all the gadgets, everything. We have the internet, Wi-Fi at the hall, so is there any platform, you know? When you start to thinking like this, then you come up with something like I I ask people around me, is there any uh, way to do this and so on? So the uh, some of my colleagues they suggested, hey, why not you try Padlet, right? Uh, it, it, you can the students can share on the Padlet the answers, and then from there we can uh, discuss more. You get more engagement from the students. That's how I uh, I improve myself, lah. Okay, uh, okay. I think I stop there first, and I pass it to my other <laughs> panel. <laughs> Right, okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you for for bringing up uh, MC, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, but MC, Michael Credentials. Yeah. Uh, so I think I would like to selectkan this this um, promotion session uh, that EDA is helping UM lecturers to create Michael Credential courses. And it is the way to go. It is really the way to go for the future. Um, we are starting, we are focusing on our training now with ASUM students. And do you, uh, do audiences, lecturers, do you understand where this is going? We are training them in PASUM. So by the time you reach, the students reach you guys, yeah, in engineering, in medicine, in law, and wherever you are from, they are all well aware of spectrum and technology and flip learning and whatever not. So it's a signal that PASUM is preparing our graduates when they come in. Maybe in one year or two years' time, you'll be seeing these students who have been going through lots of um, uh, flip learning sessions with the lecturers in Pasum. So yeah, thank you for um, being the frontliner of front uh, frontliner of uh, flip learning uh, teachers in Pasum, lecturers in Pasum. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Mahno to share any tips and challenges that you wanna um, give advice to the audience lecturers. Indah, dah kena get ready dah kan? Okay. Silakan, Dr. Mahan. Ya, alright. Eh. So, is uh, for my side, eh, uh, I agree with uh, uh, G. Amirul and also Dr. Fahmi. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, flip classroom eh, need uh, to be uh, more engaging, eh, more interesting eh, uh, to get uh, the students' attention. Eh. Okay, some tips eh, uh, for the flip uh, learning. So, basically, eh, uh, we need to choose eh, the topic eh, uh, uh, in our lecture. Eh. Basically, for me, eh, uh, I do not do eh, uh, flip classroom for all eh, uh, the topics. Eh. I choose the subtopics or part of my lecture that is uh, doable or interesting eh, for the student eh, uh, to do uh, the flip learning, especially topic that they are familiar with. Eh. Uh, it's an easy topic, eh, not the one uh, that is the core one. Okay, uh, they do not like that. Okay, so after selecting uh, the reading materials and so on, uh, you post it uh, in the spectrum and ask them to uh, uh, give uh, their feedback. And uh, we need, uh, uh, as uh, Jamiro mentioned just now, uh, we need to discuss it uh, in the lecture. And uh, sometimes uh, I will just tell them that, okay, uh, before the next uh, lecture, I will ask you the question eh, based on the material that I gave them eh, in the flip classroom. Okay, and some limitation eh, uh, uh, because it is uh, a new way of uh, learning, eh, it is new for the student. Uh, sometimes students do not know where to start, even though we have told them several times. Eh, I have to extend my due date for this forum three times eh, to get the student to give feedback. Eh. So uh, 
to for this uh, flip learning to be successful eh, it need cooperation from the student and lecturer as well okay that's uh, my some of my suggestion and tips thank you thank you so much Dr. Bahadur, for a very useful suggestion keep the topics that are simple to try out flip learning eh? don't put the major content there get them used to the idea first and then um, guide them through. Lah. Yeah, I like that uh, that suggestion. How about you, Dr. Fami? Any uh, golden tips for the audiences? All right, I think uh, I will share what challenges that I face and also how, how, how what, what are the tips. So uh, the, the challenges is, uh, the first one is you have to expect that not all students will participate. So maybe 300 of the group, maybe like 20% or 30% yeah, that, that will do the flip. Okay, and then the second one is, uh, it is actually consuming time because uh, you have to prepare the videos uh, and then you have to also learn the new technology such as Edmodo and also Padlet and uh, something else. And then uh, the tendency uh, to teach the traditional way because you are get used to, to teach like you know the previous the, the, the conventional way and also you feel not really confident and you feel uh, that it is not suitable to do a flip in a large group so i think it is actually better if we do flip in the smaller groups uh, uh, so what are the tips that uh if, if if you if you guys want to uh, do the flip or start the flip classroom is the first one is a proper planning okay and yeah, we didn't, it's, it's not only only you, we, we need to coordinate with others and uh, with other division and so on. And then uh, to educate students, uh, to tell them, to encourage them, uh, tell them that the benefits of the flip, okay, and then what are we expecting and then what not. And also the last one, uh, as uh, Mr. Amiru said just now, we also can go to the workshop uh, organized by ADEC and so that we can, uh, we can get you so how how to do a flip uh, properly and also with the right uh, the right way uh, to do uh, to, to, to the flip classroom. So I think that that's all. All right, thank you, Dr. Fami. Very useful tips as well. Um, I would like to invite if any of the um, audience have questions for our panelists based on their sharing and their experience that they treat me little by uh, yes can you hear me Umu? um yes we can hear Umu, can you hear me yes we can hear you hello Umu? hello the taza hello Umu. Uh, yeah. if you have any question please feel free to Okay, uh, okay. Type in the chat area. Yeah. Or you can just unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, can you? Okay. I was just saying, um, I wonder if any of the audience uh, have any questions for the panels. Hi, so the way afternoon. to start. Good afternoon. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hazza, Dr. Amiru, <laughs> Dr. Mahano, I'm Dr. Muhammad Faimi. I'm Dr. Yeah. Lu. I actually have a question. I'm currently teaching a uh, writing, academic writing to students, and I was thinking, uh, do you have any tips or suggestion for me on how I could possibly make it even more interesting for them? Because you all know writing itself, it's a bit dry and challenging when they first heard it. And when I flipped it, I tried to make videos of the concept. I tried not to choose content that are hard to um, delivered. I just want to engage them with the idea first, but I still feel the engagement wise, students are um, not really participating that well. Probably, you know, there's definitely a lot of room for me to improve. So I was hoping, you know, maybe I could have like some tips from the experts today to guide me through. Anyone like can take maybe, 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 how do we break the ice? I guess that's a question. Break the ice so that they want to try out flip learning in terms of writing, writing course. Tak cuba? Boleh? 
<laughs> okay, I, I can try, sure, no, no problem, yeah, right? Yeah. But, uh, I think the best person is to get uh, one of our English teacher to share the experience. Lah. <laughs> okay, so here we here we, have, we also have uh, English teachers here. So maybe they have, uh, I mean, they have their own experience they can share, but uh, what I can think of is, uh, I mean, somehow we need to figure out how to uh, motivate the students to start writing, right? That's the uh, that's the whole thing, right? I mean, uh, what are the contents? I don't know. Maybe in uh, literature, you need to uh, find an interesting video first, and then uh, get them to write something. For a start, so you, you Dr. Look. Thank you, Doctor. So you suggested that yes, they they are writing actually, but it's more of like passive involvement passive as in like you know i show them the video they watch it they do it for the sake of doing but it's it's not a form of active involvement i would say yeah, yeah. <laughs> still okay. trying still trying okay, okay yeah I, I i get what you mean people have uh, students are very active inside the class okay uh i have one experience in my first uh flip classroom what i did uh, we had, uh, I, I was teaching uh, programming subjects. Okay, how, uh, I mean, a problem solving techniques in programming. So uh, I, I teach them how to uh, do a problem analysis and then how to uh, come up with the processing, everything, algorithm and so on. So to get more engagement from them, uh, first we teach them the theory and then give them activities. So I get them into groups. And then uh, I give them a, a one broad topic. The topic is very broad, uh, changing the world with programming. So this, uh, so they they form a small group, like let's say uh, in five or five peoples. And then I give them a, a certain format that they need to uh, come with. And surprisingly, they come up with so many good ideas. So maybe we need to uh, think of something like a more uh, fun and interactive activities inside the class. Yeah, I think so. Like that's what what I did last time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Miru. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Lu, for the question. You can hear me, right? So yes, basically, you, Aza. <laughs> yeah. Thank we, you so much. We, we try to get them motivated by getting the question as or the instruction <clears throat> as general as possible, and then their group work involved. So they have someone else to talk to, not just you know a one way between them and the and the lecturer. Maybe they can help just to um, break the ice. I guess the, the beginning is to break the ice. Um, any other questions from the audience? Okay, yeah, hi. This is Farzana from Faculty of Business. Okay. Hi, yeah, okay. Dr. Amirul, you're just now sharing about uh, you gave them some activities, right? And then uh, what tool did you use? Uh, did you to get uh, to see their work? How did they submit it? And did you use Padlet or what was that used? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Farzana. Right? Okay. Uh, so for the activities, uh, is I first first of all, since this is a foundation uh, students, so we gave them a template lah on the format of the activities. Right. So I I can share you. Yep. Let me share some what I've done. Okay, never mind. I think I'll just explain. I'm not sure where the file is going to take sometimes. Okay, so basically, we just provide them some templates for them to uh, to work on. Okay, um, fill in as a group. Uh, we start with a general uh, topic, broad topic. Okay, uh, changing the world with the programming. So they have to come up with their ideas. Uh, what are the things that they see out there that can be improved by using a programming? Okay, so uh, on their on their submission, I use MS Teams. So they need to submit a, the proposal in word format in the MS Teams. And secondly, they need to do a presentation. Okay, presentation inside the class. So presentation will be inside uh, during the tutorial class in a small uh, classroom. So from there we can we can see how the students uh, uh, do their presentation, their presentation skills. Okay, all right, not just on the not, we are not looking not only on the content on their understanding of the content, but also on their, their language that they use, uh, their presentation skills, and how they bring up themselves uh, for the presentation and so on. So I think it's very, very rich. I mean, 
uh, for the students uh, to, to learn. Uh, am I answering your answer question, Dr? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I'd like to invite Dr. Mahanum to share some of the technologies that, that is useful. Dr. Mahanum, oh, yeah. oh, Okay, thank you. Okay, I want to add on the technology that I use, okay, uh, besides Padlet. Eh? Padlet is very popular because uh, it is a very uh, interesting, eh? sometimes we can put in photos and so on, okay. Uh, so that encourage participation eh, from the students. Eh? Uh, Padlets, eh? uh, I also use uh, the forum, eh? forum in the spectrum. Um, I also um, group them eh, uh, in a smaller group eh, so that they can discuss eh, among themselves eh, uh, to give a feedback eh, on, on, on the flip learning. Okay. Um, other than that, eh, I use the HYP eh, also eh, in the spectrum. Okay. So there are the three methods eh, that I use eh, in my uh, flip learning. Sorry, Dr. Mahanum. Maybe uh, Dr. Mahanum can, can, can write in the chat section the H5P. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so sometimes people all right, all right. listen, in they don't know. H5P. Uh -uh. Okay. If, they, if, you see, if they see it written, then maybe it's clearer. Okay, second one. Room. And that one, I use a tablet. Mm. There are so many other technologies. Eh? This is what uh, I'm familiar with. And maybe edX can uh, have another uh, workshop eh, on this, uh, all sort of technologies. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahanam. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Dr. Fahmi, would you like to share, um, to address any of the two questions? If we don't have any questions, Dr. Fahmi? The first okay, one uh, the, was... The tools, the tools... Uh, um, the, the how seat. do we motivate them to get them involved? And the other one... Okay, okay uh, so basically the student, uh, they, they, if, if they find your lecture interesting, so they will follow. So how I do, uh, how, how I make my uh, lectures interesting, how I make my flip classroom interesting is when I give the videos in that mod, uh, at puzzle, uh, then I do uh, what we call it, uh, the, uh, how, how, how do I evaluate the student, either they have already uh, uh, complete the flip or not. So what I did is I just give the link uh, and I use quizzes. So the quizzes is uh, what we call it the, the, the platform uh, that we can uh, write uh, solve, uh, the, the question and then also together with the uh, uh, explanation and so on. And it is quite interesting for the student because they have music, they have uh, what we call it the meme and so on. So that will uh, motivate students to, uh, to finish the flip or to finish the, the video that uploaded in the puzzle, then only they can go uh, to, to answer the all the question and all uh, the, uh, the hints in the videos in uh, and I put it in the quizzes. So I use quizzes and I also use a puzzle. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Do we have one last question from the audience? Maybe a question from me to all the audience is how ready you are, how prepared you are to do Leap learning with your own students, maybe just one class in this semester, just one class, not out of the 14 weeks, maybe just one class. How prepared are you after listening to this um, sharing that we have with our panels? You can type your answers on the chat section, how prepared you are. Maybe um, um, put some thumbs up if you think you want to try give us a thumbs up at the screen yeah there's one coming that's one or two coming we can see some are quite prepared to try it out for those who are not yet okay more coming dr martia thank you yeah so i guess um with this sharing 
um, we hope to inspire at least um, some of us in our faculty adalah sikit wakil faculty kan to try flip learning uh, it doesn't have don't worry about being very correct about it what works for you may not work for other people and what works for us may not be working for you with your students so we leave it to your judgment and your wisdom to the right topic not the right topic but the suitable topic most suitable topic most suitable time and most suitable um have your reflection and of course you can always come to ADEC for consultation on flip learning. We have our Dr. Zahi with us, myself, Dr. Amira. We have we are we are always ready to help any questions or any little guidelines or guidance that we can uh, offer. Um if we don't have questions coming in that uh, I'll wait for about 30, 30 seconds to wait if there's any other questions and any last questions. While we wait, um, I would like to invite each and every one of us to switch on our cameras. I will switch on mine. So that we can have a good group photo session. Dr. Yuan, thank you for sharing, for coming and joining us, Dr. Yuan. Dr. Yuan is my colleague from engineering. We did. We are the first batch of engineering that does micro credentials. Again, I would like to invite all of you to approach EdTech to try out doing micro credential course. We have been running it since 2021, kan, Dr. Yuan? And we are introducing the micro credential course to year one next week. Year one students, yes, yes. engineers. Yes. So it was okay, a good okay. experience being, being uh, uh, having someone to shoot us not shoot them, but eh? shoot rakam macam celebrity rasa kan? Yes, 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 <laughs> betul, betul. <laughs> uh, Edak is, is uh, uh, on our on our on our way to build more micro-credential courses and that micro-credential course actually can be used as your flip learning material actually. Instead of looking for YouTube links and you know, other materials from other people, you can use your own micro-credential um, course to become your flip learning material for the pre-class sessions. Okay, so if everyone is ready for a uh, photo session, I will let uh, Umu to take the photo. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and joining us. All right, ready, everyone? Right. One, two, three. Two. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, we will formally end this session. Thank you, Mr. Amiru. Thank you, Dr. Mahanom. Thank you, Dr. Fami, for the sharing and the um, uh, honest advice and um, tips shared by all of you. Uh, we give the best to all the lecturers in PASUM to prepare our students. And our next brown bag session will be this Thursday, uh, 3rd of November, with two more panels from PASUM. So tell your friends, tell your colleagues that we have this brown bag session. You may have more questions after this, after thinking about this, sleeping overnight after listening this. So you can join us again on Thursday, 3rd of November, same time, same venue. See you soon. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.